Today, we're going to solve a problem, one that's actually quite common with large rectangular enclosures like the one right here in my home office, and we'll use an even bigger box to solve it. So, if you dabble in sound quality, you're probably no stranger to low order enclosures. We're talking sealed and infinite baffle, or second and first order. They can be tricky to tell apart, but if the compliance of the air volume behind the driver is greater than the suspension compliance of the driver itself, that is an infinite baffle and that's what we're using here. It's probably easier just to think of it as a sealed box with a ridiculously low QTC. The benefits include flatter response, deeper extension and minimal group delay, albeit at the expense of power handling and peak efficiency, which obviously doesn't matter here as this is for critical listening, not for blaring at a gas station. Nevertheless, there are further issues to consider and the one we'll contend with today relates to the internal geometry. As you probably already know, it's not enough for a chamber to be of the correct air volume, but the shape of that volume matters as well, especially if the boundaries of that shape form parallel walls. So here's the modeled response of my enclosure, and notice that as we change its shape, even if we keep the internal volume locked in at 74 liters, the response still changes with the geometry. And this has everything to do with how the sound waves bounce around the chamber, eventually making their way back to the piston either slightly or largely out of phase, thereby adding to or taking away from the system's efficiency according to the phase of the interference. That's what we're seeing here, and that's what my enclosure does if left completely untreated. Up until now, I've been using this egg crate foam, which hasn't really made that big a difference, leading me to rely on DSP correction across the entire setup. And while the response at the listening position measures flat, in the end it's just a depiction of frequency versus amplitude with no real insight into the character of the sound. Don't get me wrong, DSP correction is a godsend, in fact I may have some videos on the topic already in the works. But in general, the less correction you have to apply, the more natural the sound as it's not being made to deviate from what the acoustic elements do of their own accord, and that's our goal here. Instead of compensating for these peaks, it's better if they don't exist in the first place. On the other hand, the effects of enclosure damping are most apparent in the near field, meanwhile my subwoofer sits on the opposite side of the room, so I'm not expecting a night and day difference. In any case, let's talk about the stuff in the big box. This is mineral wool insulation from Rockwool Acoustic, and of all the different sound absorption materials I worked with in the past, it is by far the most effective. The sheets measure 24 by 48 inches, 2 inches in thickness, and there are 6 of them in the box. Needless to say, these will replace the egg crate foam. And while we're at it, may as well do an A, B, C comparison with the foam, no insulation at all, and with the mineral wool. So, while the egg crate foam is still in the chamber, I'll go ahead and bypass everything on the DSP so that we're feeding the sub a flat signal and run a sweep. As you can see, the key features don't look a whole lot different from the predicted response, although that was modeled with no insulation. So now let's get all the foam out of there and run a second sweep. This one looks almost identical to the first, in fact, if I overlay the two, we can see exactly how the foam affects the response. The bulk of what it does appears to be right there between the two peaks, mitigating a destructive mode around 51Hz. So now let's get some of that mineral wool into the enclosure, and just like with the egg crate foam, the entire chamber receives a layer of insulation. By the way, an electric knife is by far the best cutting implement when it comes to this particular material. So with everything returned into place, we can now run our third and final sweep. Alright, so here's all our response data, starting with no insulation, then with the egg crate foam, and finally with the mineral wool. As you can see, even from across the room, the extent to which all that jagged aberration has been dampened is impressive. And not just to look at on the screen, but when using a DSP, it's also a lot easier to reshape into whatever your target response happens to be. 
Speaking of which, I will be making an in-depth presentation on tuning a multi-speaker system, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this brief comparison. Don't forget to check out the links down below if you're looking to pick up a few sheets of the mineral wool for your next project or perhaps to resolve some issues with your current enclosure. Rate the video as you see fit, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!